Hey guys, it's the Penny Pinching Prepper. Welcome to my channel. If you're uh, new to this uh, this channel, um, welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, watch the video, see if you like it. Maybe consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you do. <clears throat> for you who you those of you who've been around for a little while, thanks for coming back and checking it out. Today's Little project that we're gonna talk about is um, uh, perimeter alarms, uh, ways to be uh, alerted that something might be in your area, whether you be sleeping, busy, preoccupied, whatever, and um, you want some way to know that somebody's coming close to your camp or trying to get through your window or open your door. Uh, this is what I came up with. Um, it's based off of, you know, those 12 gauge aluminum uh, firing pin security things where, you know, trip wire, same basic concept, just those things, you know, on a good day, they're $25 and on a bad day, they're 40. Uh, this you can make anywhere for four to six dollars for one and i couldn't afford them back then because i was more concerned about other preps um now that i'm getting caught up they seem a little bit out of my price range now and i don't want to spend that kind of money on it so this was the answer i came up with um <clears throat> so the whole concept is you have a, a trip wire and hopefully it's a darker trip wire that somebody ain't going to see. But, you know, hopefully you come walking along and boom, there it goes, right? Uh, pretty easy concept, right? And uh, the way this guy is put together, take this apart. Or not a part, but undo it so it's not screwed down. Uh, it's basically it's it's a mouse trap setup, all right. And uh, I know it looks kind of funky with the long legs, but that's so you use a uh, straight walled cartridge without a. Uh, projectile in it where you've taken the projectile out and the powder now you can find blanks um, it still needs to be a rimmed straight walled cartridge uh, exposed rim that's where the the rim actually is bigger than the cartridge is so this top part the rim is bigger than the cartridge and you're going to find these mostly in your revolver rounds um, and your shotgun rounds. So, like, I got a little 410 here. I got a 45 long Colt. And this one I actually did in the 38 Special. Um, so, uh, these have... So... This has a large pistol primer and it. This has a uh, uh, small rifle, or not cartridge, uh, primer. So a large pistol primer in this one. It has a small rifle primer in this one. And it has a small pistol um, primer in this one. But... I went with these, so if I ever run out of 38s, I can always make the hole bigger and move up to something like the, the 45 or the 410 or maybe even up to a 20 gauge eventually. But you need space underneath for that bullet to hang so that it's not messing with the way you set it up. So that's why these legs are so long. Um, it would be cool to just have it flat and just have it sit or whatever. Um, but unfortunately, that's not what I came up with. So these legs are held on by little sticks that I've drilled. See, I've drilled holes through it. So these little 
sticks and um, now I'm not carrying these sticks I'm making these out in the wilderness or whatever because uh, there's no point in carrying these around when usually unless you're in the desert you can find a stick somewhere that's going to fit in those holes that you can cram in there right legs can come off all right now if you look here i've drilled a hole through there and that's so you can run a string and i got them on both sides you can run a string through them when the legs are attached you can also not have the sticks in the tops holes and run string through it to, to tie it down onto something i was actually using these little eye hooks here uh eye hole screws excuse me here um to just screw it down or you can nail it down or whatever i mean there's just it's, it's wood. Sky's the limit, guys. I mean, you can f figure out a hundred different ways to drill a hole or attach the, um, the uh, eye hole screws or whatever. And uh, basically, you just got to have a hole to put the cartridge down in and uh, make it to where... Now this is why you don't want it to be lipped, or this is why you want a, a rimmed, or a exposed rimmed straight wall cartridge, is so it'll stop without going all the way through. Because um, if not, you run the risk of just pushing it through and it, you know, being pointless and possibly not going off. So uh, the other thing you'll notice is over here there's three more of those eye hole screws and there's a little teeny tiny nail there and that's so when you're setting this all right now I still have the same one in there we've already used the uh, the blank um, and I really don't want to do one with in my hand anyways but I am gonna show you the the action of this real fast. Um, now, if I can get this off anyways, I guess we'll cheat. Maybe. All right, hold on. Stop screwing her hands. <laughs> So guys, if you're practicing with these, always make sure there's a cartridge in there. Because um, if not, you, you you can really bend from the pressure of the spring going forward since we're hanging over here. Um, it can actually bend the bar and, and screw up your alignment. So always make sure that you have something in there that it can hit. That it's not going too far. But the way it works is you just pull it back. All right, and it... You can see it goes right between those two really close ones. And uh, that's so there's not a whole lot of pressure on the pin. Um, the further those are apart, the more pressure there will be on the bend or on the pin, and the more chances there are of it screwing um, things up by bending. So now. This is the arm off of the mouse trap, all right? All right, this little arm here. Okay. And if you notice, they're all the same. They're they're not circular. They're kind of off to this one side. They're all pretty much made that way uh, for the basic mouse traps. What that allows you to do is use that for the pin and you put the loop over the nail that you've put in and it creates a safety lock so it won't accidentally set it off until you want it to go off. But once you do, you just flip it over to the other way and boom, there it goes. 
So, the great thing about it is, you can always find a way to engineer it in your own manner. Like, I'm going to show you come Friday like I always do. Well, not always. I did have that one problem. Uh, which, by the way, thumb's doing better, guys. <clears throat> But, uh, you can, you really can customize this anyway, which way you want. You can put these eye holes anywhere you want. You can drill holes through it anywhere you want to attach it, push it in different manners. You know, sky's the limit. Your imagination. Uh, so, then when you're storing it, you can put the legs like that. Take a couple of ranger bands. And I just hold the legs on like that. And backpack it wherever you want to go or, you know, store it however you want to. All nine yards. Guys, it's it's pretty simple. The most tricky part is getting the, the firing pin to, to line up right. Um, I will admit, the first time I did this, um, it didn't work. I had to go back and redo it because I had put in the fire pin at too much of an angle. So it was coming in and striking out an angle instead of straight down. Um, part of the reason was... If you notice here, there's actually a thickness of two mouse traps, and it's because I only used the one mouse trap initially, and um, it sat too low, uh, so I had to raise it up higher, and that's why I added the second height of the second mouse trap to make it work. <clears throat> so. Um, I guess uh, let's get into what it kind of takes to have this so, or uh, make this. Um, of course, you're going to need your straight walled exposed uh, rim cartridge of some sort. You're going to need your, you're going to need at least three of those uh, eye screw holes or eye hole screws, whatever they're called, you know. I'm going to mess that one up till the end of days, I tell you. Um, at least three of them. Um, <clears throat> preferably, these really nice, thick, silver ones that come in their own, uh, their own little packaging. Um, you can use... <laughs> These ones, they're a little thinner, a little smaller screw head. Um, usually get them at the, like the Dollar Tree. Uh, well, not always the Dollar Tree, but any wall hanging, you know, wall picture hanging kit. You know, usually comes in a little box like this. Um, those will work, but I do like the, the bigger, heavier duty ones myself. You're going to need two mouse traps. Now, these are the two you can go with. And you'll see they're the same brand, but they're two different styles. I'm going to recommend these guys. Um, and the reason being is this little arm right here. You'll see how it it's nice and lined up pretty straight with it. And then it comes and bends over real far. <clears throat> on these, now I'm telling you, they're all the same. All right. On this one, you'll notice that the arm's not so straight. It's got more of this funky kink. And it's just kind of slightly bent over. It's, it's not really super secure. Um, this is a, a weaker setup. These will not last in my eyes or work as good 
as these ones just because it the the straightness of it and the fact that it actually latches onto the arm um now guys i know you're probably thinking well i can just run with his idea and go and and that's fine if you really want to go for it but um it took me a while to figure this out uh, it's not just as simple as having a mouse trap and, and the rest of the stuff. Everything's placed in a specific place for a specific reason, um, which I will explain more in the next video, the actual making of it. So, once again, the uh, High Heat J uh, JB Weld Putty. And the reason I go with the high heat, for those of you who don't watch this channel, is because it takes between 15 and 30 minutes for this stuff to dry to the point where you can no longer um, bend it and ply it and, and shape it and mold it. And so this gives you a lot more time versus like the regular stuff. It dries up in about a minute. Um, it's a big difference. Uh, so this stuff allows you to continuously be able to work with it, uh, getting it to the shape that you really need it before it's dried up and you can't do nothing. <clears throat> so you'll need some of these little uh, sheet metal screws. All right. And these are... Um, these are size 6, half inch long. Okay, so get get these ones, size six, half inch long. Um, if not, you'll have to redesign everything because of the length of the firing pin. Um, and yeah, that's that's your firing pin. <laughs> um, other things you will need for supply, of course, is going to be some Ranger brands. Comes out of your bicycle tube. Uh, I think that's really, oh, and you'll need, not for some, not just for securing it to something, but you actually need, uh, two wood screws, at least an inch and a half long, uh, to work with, uh, your building materials, so... Two mouse traps, JB Weld putty, high heat, couple of screws, your uh, six by half inch, and some sort of a, a, a wood plank you can use. Guys, don't go any bigger than half inch. Actually, don't go any smaller than half inch. I, I think half inch is perfect. I think you could push it up to three quarters inch, um, but the weight that you're adding, I, I just think you're, you're adding way too much weight. I think the sweet spot is half inch, and um, it needs to be bigger than the mouse trap by an inch and a half um, so that you can get uh, well I, I guess that might be closer to hold on let's see before I go and make big old assumptions okay so it needs to be an inch larger than the mouse trap at least all right so your mouse traps run you um, an inch and three quarters and this here board is two and three fourths inch quarters uh, you can get sheet board and, and cut your own sizes out or um, ply board excuse me not sheet board ply board you know cut out your own shaped pieces all of that I just found this was easy um, you can find this kind of stuff in uh, the trimming section and when I say trimming I mean like wall trim um, the stuff that runs uh, along the bottom of the wall or the the bumper that runs across the middle of the wall or the trim you know your moldings your molding trims good place to look for this type of stuff that's in that half inch um, I believe this is actually uh, the stuff that goes through the, the middle of the wall, the bumper board, commonly used in um, 
uh, dining room so that you, uh, when you scoot your chair back, you bounce into this instead of the wall. Uh, but you need at least, um, gosh, I want to say a foot and a quarter, a foot and an inch is what I want to say. So this is six and a half inches. Now guys, this is barely big enough to squid or uh, squeeze everything on here just right at six and a half inches. Um, so let's say at least 14 inches of board um, because you've got to make your legs too. So you're basically doubling the size of the board. So 14 inches at least. Now if you're going to use a 12 gauge, you might want to go up to 15 inches of board length um, just to make room for that, that big old 12 gauge rim. So those are the materials you need. And then for tools, for tools, you need a hammer sometimes. Um, depending on how you're doing it. You'll definitely need some sort of a drill. You'll need a small flathead screwdriver or a small chisel. I'm using a quarter inch chisel. Uh, some sort of a saw. You'll need some drill bits. All right. You'll need some sort of a wood glue, preferably an outdoor wood glue. And either a Dremel with a cutting wheel or a hacksaw or something like that because the screws will end up coming through the bottom here a little bit too long and you're going to want to be able to cut them off as you see as I did there. Okay, and last but not least, you're going to need... Um, a uh, handheld screwdriver um, because you do not want to be using your electric screwdriver. We'll be using this as a drill, not a screwdriver, to screw these down through this wood because you go too fast, too hard, and it cracks. So we want to pre-drill and hand tighten these in so that things don't crack and go wrong. <clears throat> Other than that, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, any comments, leave them below, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, and I always appreciate comments, um, ideas, you know, ways that you see that it could have been better. Share them down below for other people to see, and me. Um, I'm not going to say that this is the absolute best design. It's just the best design I could come up with that is basically 10 times cheaper than the alternative store bought. Um, so, guys, if you like this video, uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel and you liked it and you think I have something to offer, please consider subscribing and seeing part two of this video where I take you through building it um guys i i know i've been uh slowed the last couple of weeks but i'm ready to get back to work um i think that's about all i can say um other than if you need to contact me other than on youtube you can reach me at penny pinching prepper 77 at gmail.com um i'm willing to talk, have conversations, discuss things, take in ideas, prayers for people, whatever. Um, I got a lot of time on my hands. So remember, God's good and God bless.